morning, everyone. We're team number five. Uh, my colleagues are uh, John Powell and Marcel Milanese, and myself, uh, Juan Camilo Medina. And our project dealt with uh, modular robots. The Alan for our project uh, dealt with uh, sensors, the 3D, 3D platform modeling, which is a design implementation, and the four legged gate development. The main purpose of our project was to improve and develop a search and rescue uh, modular robot. The reason why we choose a modular robot is because they can take any shape uh, in the terrain. Uh, we focus in three areas in, uh, in our project. Uh, one was actually to keep the modularity of our system. I mean, we didn't want it to uh, maintain two servers like a step. We actually want to get all the movement from them. In addition to that, we wanted to integrate all the sensors in one platform to simplify uh, mechanism and, uh, and at the end also to improve on the weight of, of the actual system itself. For the sensor enhancement part we chose the QT1T, the QT110 subsensor, which is a less expensive than mechanical switches. Um, it only has, it only uses a capacitor as an external part and it operates between 2.5 and 5 volts. This is the schematic for the QT110 touch sensor. Here we ran um, a, uh, an experiment uh, using the touch sensor and the actual robot. After running a few simulations, we found out that, the, um, that it, best, um, it, it best works with humans and metal. Here, for the uh, infrared sensors, we chose four infrared sensors and placed them in a diamond shape, which gave us the best viewing angle of 120 degrees with a 30 degree overlap. For the 3D platform, uh, we focus pretty much on the power that it was going to be supplying the robot. So this is the casing that we choose for the for the batteries. Uh, the, batter, the batteries are a little heavier than a 1.5 volt. And uh, the reason why we choose that many uh, holes is because it will allow us to reduce weight. In addition to that, we actually built a cooling system for the circuit board. As you can see right here, the battery fell. Uh, this is a, a SOLIDWORK uh, 3D model, and this is the actual prototype built in a, a, out of a 3D printing. Everything has been done in, at FIU. Uh, this is the lashing mechanism. We actually developed a lashing mechanism for, uh, for future development, and pretty much what it's going to be doing is going to be attached to the modular robot, and a helicopter will deploy uh, this system. And as you can see right here, this is all the mechanisms that will take part of, uh, of our system. We have a camera. Uh, we actually uh, implement two cameras. One is going to be for a long range, and one is going to be for a, ro a short range. Pretty much trying to simulate what a human being could do. And we're also planning to put a solar panel on the top to feed power to the batteries. For the um, actual gate development, we employed uh, inverse kinematic analysis for each one of the legs of the robot and um, each, each leg can be represented as a planar 3R uh, robotic arm and those are the, um, the equations of the inverse kinematics. Uh, the first step um, to do the analysis is to select the uh, trajectory that each one of the legs will, will be following and uh, I selected an arc first um, as the reference. I, I solved the kinematic equations for, for the arc and then I realized that um, some of the uh, joints were reaching singular positions. Uh, why is that? It's because of the uh, modularity of the robot. Um, the servos are 180 degree servos and it only allows a 90 degree relative angle between, between each one of the links. So I, keeping that in mind, I redesigned the, um, the path to be followed for each one of the legs and this is the, uh, the modified trajectory. And then um, to solve the kinematic equations again, well, I had an extra problem. It's, it's, uh, each one of the legs is a planar three degrees of freedom uh, uh, robotic arm. And so I had three variables and only two equations. So in order to make this sys the system solvable, I needed to specify one of the joints positions uh, all the time. So what I did is I did uh, theta 2 equal to theta 3, and that simplified my equations, and, and I could, could solve them. Um, so these are the results. This is for the, um, the rear leg. Um, the kinematic analysis um, has two different solutions. Uh, they're also referred as closures, and uh, the, cr the closure on the right violates the uh, 90 degree, degree constraint and the, the closure on the left it doesn't, it's, uh, it's actually good.
Uh, this is, these are the results for the uh, front leg. Uh, same thing, the, the closure on the right violates the 90 degree constraint and the, cl the closure on the left doesn't. Um, so the next step was to um, uh, load the uh, actual angle, angle joints in a simulation to see what happened. Uh, first I created a gate and it wasn't very stable so I improved it and this is the, uh, this is the result. So um, here you can see how the, how the legs are moving. I wanted to use a conservative approach. I, didn't want to, I only wanted to move one leg at a time to maintain a stability. And um, uh, we knew that the servos weren't, weren't very powerful, it would, so it would be moving slowly. And we were checking uh, for stability all the time. This is a side view of the, um, the walking gate. So you can see how um, each one of the legs recreates the motion in the simulation. Uh, and the idea is that all, all the joints are going to be moving forward, so all the legs are moving forward, although only one is up in the air. Um, reaching the next position of, of the gate. It kind of like res resembles an like spider, I don't know, that, that's what it does to me. So uh, we can con conclude that the, um, uh, the quadruped gate for the, uh, the robot was su successfully uh, developed and implemented in simulation. And uh, for the gate, for future work, uh, we observe that you, you cannot only uh, model the, fl the floor as a flat surface, you can model the floor as an incline, as, an, as a slope, and you can also um, develop a turning maneuver. To conclude the uh, sensor enhancement part of the project, we adapted four IR sensors and a touch sensor to the new platform. And for future works, uh, we would like to change the touch sensor for another one that could detect uh, various materials. And finally, uh, uh, for the platform modeling, uh, we actually got to build it. And uh, improvement for the future, definitely a stronger the material, but yet lighter. It could be PVC or plastic, but definitely we will go with this uh, prototype. And we would like to thank uh, Dr. Tosunoglu, uh, Mr. Alejandro Lopez, Carlos Velez that is in the audience again, and Adrian Arby. And, and, and this concludes our presentation. If you have any questions, we'll be glad to uh, answer them. Thank you. Thank you.